About 17 years ago, Lincoln introduced an all new midsize crossover to the lineup called the Aviator. Now back then, it was based on the then new Ford Explorer platform, and it essentially looked like a scaled down version of the Navigator. Sales were relatively good. Now, of course, fast forward to today, and I'm standing by the all new version of the Aviator. This is the all new 2020 model, also based off of the current generation Explorer, which is now riding on a rear drive platform. It comes standard with a twin turbocharged V6. It has stunning looks that should challenge challenge any of the other offerings in the luxury SUV segment. And just like back then, it looks like a scaled down version of the Lincoln Navigator. So the big question I want to answer, if you guys are looking to purchase an all new three row luxury crossover, has Lincoln built a vehicle that can finally go toe to toe with the Germans? That's what we're here to find out. Hey guys, before we get started with the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Shine Armor. Now you guys know, one of the constant struggles I deal with is trying to keep the cars clean in between the shoots. Here in the DC area, it'll rain, it'll snow, it'll sleet. We just have really terrible weather conditions sometimes. And as you can see, cars like this 2020 Lincoln Aviator, even though this silver color hides a lot of dirt, will get kind of this little dirt on it where you kind of have to touch it up in between the shoots. And if you don't feel like washing the car completely, this is where I come in and I use this stuff called the Fortify Quick Coat, which is essentially a beefed up spray detailer. It's enhanced with a ceramic coating. Ceramic coating is that a stuff that dealers charge you a couple thousand dollars extra for to kind of coat the car so it repels the dirt. And this stuff is really easy to use when you're trying to clean a car in a pinch. You kind of just spray it over the dirty area very liberally. Now this stuff also is infused uh, with something that'll keep, that'll kind of encapsulate the dirt. So that way it safely allows you to kind of lift it away. And it works on glass, it works on all painted surfaces. It even works on those matte finish paint um, cars. So all you have to do is kind of spray it on and then wipe it away. And what you're left with essentially right afterwards is a very, very shiny surface that is free of haze as long as you used a really clean rag. So if you guys are interested in purchasing a bottle of this stuff, uh, be sure to click on the link on the BOGO link in the description below. Shiner actually has a deal right now where if you click on that link, use our code, you can get up to four bottles free depending on which value pack you purchase. So when the first generation Aviator came out, I was actually in high school and I remember that car for looking exactly like just a mini me version of the Navigator. It was relatively successful for Lincoln and unlike the Mercury Mountaineer, which was also a sister vehicle at the time, the Aviator actually had some differences that differentiated it from the Explorer, just like this all new version. Now, as you can see, looking at the styling of this car, if you guys like the way the Navigator looks, you're gonna love the way this looks. It has all the corporate design stuff that we see from current Lincoln products. You can see the grill has a lot of chrome on it. You've got the Lincoln Star kind of front and center of the grill. You've got these full LED headlights, which my tester here has the illumination package. So it kind of has like a pixelated LED where they'll do a little dance whenever you lock and unlock the car. The Lincoln Star there also illuminates at night. It's a very beautiful looking car. When you approach it, just like the Navigator, it'll kind of approach or it'll kind of turn on the lights where they'll do a little dance. And then the car, because this one has the dynamic package, has an air suspension which will lower and raise it relatively quickly to help you get in and out of the vehicle. These LED fog lights also complete the look. You have more chrome here at the lower front fascia. And as you guys know, this car is based off of the Ford Explorer platform. So it's now a rear drive platform, which we'll talk about the power powertrains in just a moment. Now looking at the rest of the profile, you can see there are a couple things I'm noticing about the new Aviator. Lincoln doesn't like to admit it, but this is essentially a replacement for the MKT. It kind of looks like a, a wagon or a hatchback from certain angles, especially when the car is squat down when it, on its lowest suspension setting. This car is also a relatively big car, but it's not as big as the Navigator, which is easily about a foot longer than this. At 199 inches long, this is about six inches longer than the first generation Aviator, but it's the same exact length as a Ford Explorer. Its wheelbase is also around the longest in the class at 119 inches long. It's all again going to give you a little bit more space. It gives this thing some really nice proportions compared to the new Explorer, which I showed you over a review on the ST version. This car is about an inch wider and an inch lower to give it a different kind of, you know, rear drive or luxury proportions to it. Now my tester here is the reserve model. It's the reserve two package, which includes these massive 22 inch wheels. In this segment of vehicle, 22s are quickly becoming the norm. They're riding on 275 
with tires. I think the wheels actually look good. It actually looks good in the silver color that this has. Usually I'm not really the biggest fan of silver, uh, but on this car it looks very classy, it looks very elegant. There are a couple of styling details here that I wanna talk about. If you notice the A pillar here and the D pillar are blacked out, that kind of gives it an impression that the thing has kind of like a floating roof design, but not the same kind of look that you see on like some Nissan products. Let me know in the comments below if you think it looks good. Now, a couple of other things that you're gonna notice, the door handles on this car are interesting because they don't actually open and pull like a traditional door handle. Instead, when you wanna open the door, there's this little button here on the back and you push that button and that opens the door for you. My tester here also has the soft closing doors because it has an optional convenience package that includes that. That convenience package also rolls in a feature where you can use your phone as the key. That's right, this car, just like a Tesla, is the first Lincoln to introduce that feature. Unfortunately, since it's not my car, I can't actually demonstrate it for you because I'm not the owner of the vehicle, but I'll have to take Lincoln's word for it. Looking at the rest of the side profile here, you can see it has a very kind of like wagon-ish look. It reminds me a little bit of like a Range Rover from the side profile. Some people have also told me that it looks a little bit like a Saab, which you're gonna really find the Saab influence when you come over to the rear of this vehicle. You can see complete full length LED taillights here, which have that traditional Lincoln look. I also like how Lincoln's kind of spelling out their badge at the back here, as opposed to putting the actual Lincoln star. Down here, you get a little bit more chrome, uh, and then you have these nice looking quad exhaust tips, which definitely make this thing look powerful. It makes it look elegant. It makes it look fast. I really like how cleanly designed this thing is, especially compared to the newcomer from Cadillac, the XT6. This is a much more impressive looking vehicle than that, and a lot of its Japanese competition. Now, opening up the trunk area, this car does have a power lift gate, as you can see. It's a relatively fast moving power lift gate, and just like the Explorer on which this is based, you get a fairly good amount of cargo room. Now, obviously, this one here has a power folding third row. That third row seat is gonna come standard, and when you actually have the third row up, Lincoln says you get around 18.3 cubic feet of space. If you look underneath here, there is a fairly good amount of storage underneath the floor there, so you can kind of hide stuff under there. And then when you fold down the third row again, this will expand the cargo capacity to a little over 40 cubic feet of space. And if you fold everything down, the Explorer offers around 85 cubic feet of space, which is gonna be the same as the new Aviator. So this is among the highest in the segment in terms of cargo capacity. Okay, so the exterior of the Aviator is gorgeous, but what about the interior? That's really where a luxury SUV buyer is going to be spending a lot of their time. First getting in this interior and shutting this door, you can hear it has a really solid funk. And if you guys are too lazy to actually slam the door, my tester here has the soft closed doors, which is very nice. Now, one thing I also wanna point out, to open the door in here, which I usually don't talk about this, there's no actual physical handle because remember those doors have that little actuator that you push. So there's a button here on this side that opens the door. And if the power goes out, in case you're wondering, there's also a little emergency level lever here in case the power goes out and you need to actually open the door. So Lincoln, managed to think of that. Now looking at the key fob for this vehicle, you can see it's the same key fob that you see in a lot of Ford vehicles, but Lincoln obviously adds a little bit more chromey buttons. You can also access the remote start. You can also open the tailgate from here when you want to start the vehicle up. Just keep the key fob in here because it has the uh, intelligent access key. You can see when the vehicle starts up, you can hear it doesn't have the same Ford chime that you hear in an Explorer. I'm really happy that Lincoln actually changed out the chime. In fact, uh, Lincoln actually worked with the Detroit Symphony Band to come up with all of the different noise, the noises that this car makes, the different chimes, the different alerts. So they went to great lengths to try to differentiate this thing from a Ford product. And it really shows when you get into this vehicle, you get a sense that it's part of the Ford family, but there's a lot of upgraded materials in here that really take it to the next, no to the next level. The dashboard, as you can see, is a very you know, straight across dashboard. Um, there's some genuine leather here across the dashboard, some genuine wood. Uh, this area here is soft touch. Um, there's some piano black plastic. This massive 10.2 inch display here is part of the SYNC 3, or I guess Lincoln likes to call it Lincoln SYNC 3 or something like that. Um, the interface itself looks very similar to some of the Ford products, as you can see. However, Lincoln has kind of beefed it up. They've made the screen even more um, beautiful. They've made the uh, graphics even nicer. It actually moves relatively quickly. So this, we'll come back to this in just a moment. The door panels over here are also soft touch, just like on the dashboard. You have your actual seat controls over here on the seats, which by the way, this car has the 30-way perfect position seats, which basically means you can adjust the seat in so many different ways, even like the bolsters. You can adjust the thigh bolsters on each individual leg. There is a lot of adjustability in this car, which I actually found it to be a little bit difficult to get comfortable in this car. There is such a saying as there's too much of a good thing and maybe the 30 ways offers too many different ways of adjustability. 
This is part of a luxury package that my tester has. The seats are also heated and cooled, and they also include a massaging function. So if you want to activate this massage, you push this button here on the door panel, the massage seat controls pop up over here, and you can see you can go from all these different types of massages, which all of them work extremely well. Um, just like all the European cars, Lincoln really thought this through. And again, this adds to the whole level of quality uh, and just level of luxury that you get with this car that you just don't get in a lot of the Japanese offerings. Now coming over here to the steering wheel, this is by the way a heated steering wheel which is nice. I like the fact that it's got this two-tone leather. My tester has kind of like a cashmere beige leather. The steering wheel itself is also power tilt and telescoping. You have all these buttons over here on the steering wheel which um, also includes this kind of joystick over here to access some controls for that screen over there. You can play your music here or skip your music, adjust the volume. The cruise control buttons are also interesting because when I push this button here to turn it on, more buttons appear here, when, but they're actually blacked out when the cruise control is not on. So I actually like that little detail that Lincoln put. If you wanna see your actual cruise control uh, status, it's actually all in the head-up display that my tester has. It's part of a optional package. This all, to me, is really in the details. Compared to the Explorer that I tested last year, this interior just looks and feels a lot nicer. Now let's come over here to the center stack because as you can see here, it's relatively clean considering the fact that this car has a lot of features and technology in it. Now, first of all, here's the transmission selector. I know a lot of you don't like these push button ones. Lincoln calls this the piano key transmission selector. As you can see, park is right here. Reverse is right there. When I put it in reverse, you can see it has this really gorgeous backup camera display with the full 360 view. Very impressive camera quality resolution. This is exactly what I expect in the luxury segment. And then of course, when you put it in drive, um, the button over here is for drive. There's a lot of empty space over here, although I'm surprised Lincoln didn't kind of cover this up with something. This car does also include paddle shifters, which we'll talk about how this drives later on in the test drive. Um, over here, you can see on the screen, Apple CarPlay is also obviously included. What's interesting to me is if you guys buy the Top Trim Explorer, Ford actually puts a bigger 12-inch display in the Explorer where it stands very tall portrait style. This technically is not quite as big, but I'm noticing that the screen is actually wider, which is definitely nice. The screen also looks a little bit brighter, but there's something about this screen that kind of pisses me off, and that's the fact that the bezel is very thick. There's a lot of unused real estate over here with the black plastic that I kind of wished Ford had used more of the actual screen. And then there's also something here where you're gonna notice the screen is kind of shoved all the way down to the bottom over here, but at the top, there's a lot of black plastic that's not being used. So those of you who are OCD, you may find this to be a little bit distracting. I personally think that it's something that I would probably just get used to, but just kind of keep that in mind. It's a little detail that I wish Lincoln had kind of sweated a little bit when they were designing this car. Now looking at the rest of the center console, you can see your heated and cooled seat controls are over here. A lot of the switch gear and buttons here look a lot nicer than what you find in some Ford vehicles, but you can tell that this is part of the Ford family. There's some nice uh, aluminum look trim over here. These little covers also are very sturdy. It's all very clean when you kind of have it closed up. You have your USB and your USB-C port over there. The drive mode selector is over here. You can see when you switch the drive modes, uh, it actually shows up over there on the instrument panel. You can see there's Excite for Sport, there's Conserve for Efficient, there's Normal, there is slippery, and then there's a deep conditions. Now this car's air suspension is linked to the drive modes on this vehicle. So when I switch it to deep conditions, it's gonna raise the suspension of this vehicle by about three inches to give us more ground clearance. If you're actually planning to take this vehicle off-road, that's what Lincoln's going to do for you there. Looking over at the rest of the center console, you can see it's a nice padded area over here. When you open this up, you can see it has a lot of space in there, uh, which is nice. You have your wireless phone charging port in there, which is good. And it's also damp lime to fell. It's also lit up, which is nice. Um, the seats right here are also very comfortable, but again, I found them a little difficult to get an actual comfortable driving position in them. And then over here, you can see the glove compartment. It's relatively good size. It's damped, it's lined with felt. Uh, which is very nice. Uh, and again, it, this vehicle does offer a good amount of storage. The one thing I really like about this car is the audio system. This car has the optional 28 speaker uh, Revel audio system, which sounds incredible. When I turn this vehicle up, I can really hear, you know, just how much of a concert-like experience this car gives you. But I did also notice when I turned it up pretty loud, there was a door panel part that was rattling a little bit from the base. So I'm gonna chalk that down to this being a pre-production model. Above me, there's the massive panoramic sunroof, which really lets in a lot of light for this vehicle. So those of you who are looking for that feature, Lincoln does offer it. So really, the company has sweated a lot of details in this interior. I know this was a lot to talk about because there's a lot of different features in this car, but those of you who are looking for the ultimate luxury or the ultimate American luxury, Lincoln certainly delivers it with this new Aviator. So the Aviator is a family vehicle. 
Obviously, we need to look at the second row of this car and see how the space is like. Now, getting back here, my tester has the captain's chairs. If you guys want an actual bench, Lincoln does offer that to you for like an $800 option, which is nice. I actually like the captain's chairs because the seats themselves are actually very comfortable and there's a lot of room back here. The leg room is around 39 inches, which matches that, again, of the Ford Explorer. This is about the norm for what you expect in the segment. The seats also do have some adjustability, so I can kind of move the seat forward and back. I can also do a little recline of the seats if I'd like, so it's all very nice. And then, unlike the Ford, Lincoln kind of gives you this small little five inch screen here where you can access features like the heated and cooled second row seats. You can't get that in the Explorer. So again, this is a really nice upscale feature. You can also access the climate control, which this car has a separate three, row, three zone climate control. This screen over here allows you to go to like your different settings. You can also go to like a comm screen there, which is really nice. Beautiful graphics, considering this is just a screen that's in the third row of the vehicle. So again, this is kind of an upscale touch that you don't get in the Ford models. Now also, you, you also get things like rear seat air vents. You have a USB and a USB-C. You have an actual power outlet over there, a household power outlet, which is nice. I like the fact that the floor is almost completely flat. My tester also has kind of the mini console here with some cup holders, a little bit of storage. Lincoln also offers a massive bigger console if you guys want a little bit more that will take up a little bit more space. And then above me over here, you can see the panoramic sunroof also lets in a lot of light, but I will say that it stops in the second row. It doesn't actually go into the third row like on some competitors, but speaking of the third row, let's hop back there and see if it's actually usable for adults. All right, so what if you're the lucky person that gets stuck in the third row of the aviator? Can it actually fit full-size adults? Well, let's get back there and find out. When you want to get back there, there's a little button here that you can push on the seat back. That will kind of hydraulically push the seat forward and you can actually manually move it forward a little bit more. And it reveals a decent amount of space to get back here. But to humor you guys, let me get back here myself and show you guys the space. Now, right now I have the second row seats pushed all the way back, which is where I wanna show you guys for demonstration purposes. I'm five foot seven, so I'm not the tallest person, but I can tell you with confidence that the third row back here is cramped. Just like on the Explorer, this is not the kind of space you're gonna find on something like the Telluride or the Honda Pilot or something like that. This is kind of more akin to um, a Toyota Highlander, but this is worlds better than the Lexus RX. I believe the Acura MDX offers a little bit more third row seat space. Now, of course, I could push this seat a little bit forward, so it would take my knees from being, being in the seat back, but getting back here, you can see the seat back here actually is decent. It's covered in some nice leather. In terms of you know stuff, there are some rear seat air vents back here. No actual USB ports back here, which I'm surprised. I would have preferred to see Lincoln put some actual USB ports back here. You do have some LED lighting. This only seats two back here, remember. Uh, just like the Explorer, this only sits two across. So this particular one here that I'm showing you is a six seater. And if you guys go for the bench up front or in the second row, you can seat up to seven people in this car. So overall, if you're looking for a third row or a luxury crossover that has actual space for adults in the third row, the Aviator is definitely on the tight side. So the Aviator is an all new car underneath and you also are gonna get all new powertrains. Now the powertrains underneath here are gonna very closely mimic the Explorer. However, unlike the Ford, this comes standard with the top engine that you can get in the Explorer. This is a new three liter twin turbocharged V6. The V6 itself has a lot of plastic covering here, although the part that Lincoln left open here for you to see isn't really pretty to look at. So looks aside, this engine makes 400 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque. That's the same power outfit figures you're gonna get in the Ford Explorer. Or ST, which I actually tested late last year, which I found to be a very quick car. Now it all comes standard with a 10 speed automatic transmission and you can take your pick between either rear or all wheel drive. This particular one here that I'm showing you for $2,500 more is obviously the all wheel drive model. Properly equipped, these aviators will tow a maximum of 6,700 pounds. So I was a little disappointed with the towing capacity. I was expecting it to be more like Durang Dodge Durango, which offers like a 9,000 pound towing capacity considering this is now a rear drive platform. Now to compete with the V8, offerings in some of the European com competition, Lincoln also offers an Aviator Grand Touring. That's gonna be a different review. That essentially has this motor with a 13.6 kilowatt hour battery pack and an electric motor to make 494 horsepower and 630 pound-feet of torque. That's a car that I'm really looking forward to driving. Lincoln says you can get around 20 miles of uh, electric-only range on that car. Now, this particular one here gets pretty decent fuel economy. It's rated at 17 in the city, 24 on the highway. That's about the same as what you're gonna get with the Explorer, with this powertrain. As this one sits, she's a heavy car. This thing weighs a little over 5,000 pounds. If you guys get the new hybrid model, that's an additional 700 pounds heavier than this exact car. But despite that, Lincoln says you should get to 60 in under six seconds. Let's get this out on the road and see how it performs, shall we? 
So when I first tested the Explorer ST last year, I was blown away with the performance of that engine. I mean, you have a twin turbocharged V6, you had these massive wheels, you had a suspension that was supposedly tuned by ST. It was a much better effort forward um, for the ST division at Ford in actually building an SUV that was more performance derived. I mean, remember the Edge ST wasn't all that good. So my expectations for this new Aviator are very high. And just uh, after just coming out of the XT6 a couple of months ago, um, that car was a huge disappointment. Uh, it actually wasn't that bad of a car, but when you drive the competition, a lot of the German competition, the XT6 was kind of stuck where the Japanese are playing right now, whereas you can easily feel that Lincoln is trying to reach higher. They're going for a much higher goal. Um, this rear drive platform of the Aviator is hugely noticeable. I mean, the car feels really balanced, but at the same time, it also feels big and heavy, but in a way that makes you feel like you're piloting a safe vehicle. The Aviator, you know, has the sportier feel of the Explorer ST, but it has a much better ride quality, because remember, we've got air suspension in this thing, and we also have adaptive dampers that kind of tries to predict the road a little bit. So I'm gonna come to a stop over here, and I wanna just try out the acceleration really quick. I'm gonna put the transmission into its sport or excite mode here. And we're just gonna try flooring it from a dead stop. Oof. <laughs> and very nice sound. It's got a quick shifting transmission. This is the 10 speed auto, as you guys know, from the Ford and GM division where they kind of co-developed the transmission. And then at the same time, the companies kind of went their separate ways. You can easily feel that this has a lot of power. I mean, this is a turbocharged engine, has plenty of torque, plenty of horsepower. It feels like it'll get to 60 in just under six seconds, which is right around where Lincoln rates this engine. Now, disappointingly, it is slower than the German competition. The X540i with the three liter inline six is quicker by like almost a second. And the Mercedes GLE 450 is also quicker than this. But remember, Lincoln does offer that GT, that Grand Touring version, which has a plug-in hybrid system with like almost 500 horsepower. So that's a different review. Um, this engine, however, for a base engine, offers plenty of power, good noise, good refinement. And even though the Aviator is such a big, heavy car, it isn't as cumbersome to drive as you think. I mean, the Navigator looks exactly like this car, but this is a much easier car to drive on curvy back roads, uh, in tighter spaces. Like, it is amazing to me what Lincoln has done with this car. They really have elevated the Aviator to another tier here. And really the big competition with this car is the Volvo XC90, the upcoming Genesis GV80. They all have a very unique feel to them. And it's a really nice alternative to the European entries. Even though this car has 22 inch wheels, I've got it in its excite mode, which is kind of like its sports setting. Its ride quality is really comfortable. The steering has decent feedback. I'm sitting here getting a massage for Christ's sakes. It's such a nice, nice overall feel. Although I will say that this particular one that I'm driving has a couple of creaks and rattles and a little bit of wind noise from areas that I'm not really ex you know, happy to hear it coming from. For a car that's this amount of money, I expected the build quality to be near perfect and it is definitely a little shoddy in some areas. So, <laughs> but wow, did I never think that I could have this much fun driving a Lincoln SUV. This drives even better than the Explorer and Explorer ST. So if you think that this is just another guzzied up Explorer, you are terribly wrong. This car is incredible to drive. It's really comfortable to sit in. It's quiet on the inside. Visibility in here is also good. You can see out of the front well, you got these big side mirrors. This particular one has the Lincoln Copilot 360 where in the head up display here, it shows you, you know, your lane keep assist. It shows you the adaptive cruise control, the active, you know, lane trace control where it keeps you in the lane. The head up display also shows you a lot of useful information. And in excite mode, this thing can actually get a little exciting. I'm surprised. Now, let me try another acceleration run here. We're going to just brake torque it slightly and then floor it. Ooh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, this thing is quick. I'm impressed with how quick this thing is. <laughs> I mean, it's not like 
sporty like the way an X5 is going to be or a Porsche Cayenne, but it's a happy medium between those two vehicles and it coddles you in luxury and technology and just elegance and classiness. It's a very American style way of luxury. It's very fast to accelerate, comfortable ride, yet it doesn't feel like a big boat when you start pushing it. And it looks good on the outside, so you have to be super impressed with Lincoln with this car. They've really outdone themselves with the Aviator. And it's definitely worth the you know, pretty penny that they are asking, depending on the trims. I mean, if you go crazy with the options, I think this car is a little overpriced. Um, but if you can get it for a right price, I'm imagining a lot of Lincoln dealers are probably discounting this thing fairly good amount right now. It does genuinely feel much more special than its Ford counterpart. And in terms of the fuel economy in this week's worth of testing, I averaged around 17 MPG in the city, which is bang on with the EPA's targets. And on the highway, I got it up to about 25 MPG. So not bad gas mileage. I imagine the hybrid should do a lot better. And you also get the plug-in, you know, electric only range with the hybrid version. I am curious to drive the hybrid, but it is a significantly heavier car than this one at nearly 6,000 pounds. And this thing isn't exactly light already, but she does hide the mask very well and a lot of you will be genuinely surprised. I wholeheartedly recommend this car, depending on the other options, but just keep in mind, the competition is stiff, and that upcoming Genesis GV80 is going to really give this car a run for its money when it goes on sale this summer. Now, nearly two years ago, when Lincoln unveiled the production version of the Aviator in LA, I was blown away by this car. In fact, I wasn't the only one. The industry was, consumers was, everyone was kind of in disbelief that Lincoln had developed a car that captured everything we loved about the Navigator, but kind of put it into a smaller package. Kind of like what they did about 15 years ago with the first generation Aviator. And I think Lincoln did a fabulous job with bringing back the Aviator name. I'm really happy to see the company is moving away from those silly alphanumeric names. Remember, this car is supposed to replace the MKT. And unlike the MKT, there's a certain swag about the Aviator. It really turned a lot of heads everywhere I took it. Because it's based on the Rear Drive Explorer platform, it has a really nice driving dynamic. The engine offers plenty of power. The 10-speed automatic, although it can get confused at times, most of the times does a really good job at choosing the right gear and putting the engine in the meat of the power band. Unlike the Explorer ST that I drove last year, because this car has an air suspension, the ride quality is not affected by these massive 22-inch wheels, which the Explorer I found to have a little bit of a harsher ride quality and it was a little bit noisier than I'd like. This to me kind of has that sleek sporty feel that you get in the Explorer, but it also coddles you in luxury. This thing feels like a tank. It feels very secure. It feels very safe. It feels very Lincoln-like. So Lincoln really captured the beauty of American luxury here and they did it right with the Aviator. The styling of the car also is very unique. I like the fact that I see some hints of Saab, some Land Rover in the design. And really, I'm looking forward to driving the plug-in hybrid model because the hybrid model is going to offer buyers, uh, those greedy buyers, you know, 20 miles of electric-only range and up to 630 pound-feet of torque. So eventually, when Lincoln sends me that car, I'll do a full review on that. But with all that said, if you guys are looking to purchase an Aviator today, how much is it going to cost? Well, unfortunately, because of all this new technology, this is not a cheap proposition. In fact, Lincolns in general have been getting way more, more, more expensive. A lot of the American brands are. This car starts at just under $52,000 for the base model. Now, of course, that's going to be several thousand dollars more expensive than a Lexus RX, an Acura MDX, and an Infiniti QX60. Now, I'm going to argue that the Aviator is in a class above those vehicles because I would put this thing head-to-head -head with something like a BMW X5, an Audi Q7, and a Mercedes-Benz GLE. Those are all going to start in the upper $50,000 ranges. Now, of course, this particular one here is the reserve trim. The reserve trim comes with some extras like the 20-inch wheels, the Revel 14-speaker sound system, and then some upgrades on the interior. This is going to start at around $58,000 for the reserve model. If you guys go all in for the black label model, the black label model basically includes everything, including like a concierge service where you'll get lifetime car washes for free and a once in the year detailing service. And, the car, and Lincoln will actually send someone to your house to pick up the car whenever it needs service. The black label starts at around $77,000, but it again includes everything. If you guys are looking for the Grand Touring models, those are like an additional $10,000 on top of that. So this one here is the reserve two with practically everything. It's basically a black label model and it stickers for around seven. $76,000. Now that actually is about similar money as what you're gonna pay for the Cadillac XT6, which I personally think this is a way nicer car. But just keep in mind, a Lexus RX is gonna be about 10 grand uh, less. An Acura MDX and an Infiniti QX60 is gonna be about 10 grand less. 
This is about the same price as a Volvo XC90, uh, but also if you guys wanna build a, a top of the line X5 or a Mercedes, those are gonna be over $80,000. So Lincoln does have a little bit of value. You just kinda of have to get past the Lincoln badge and realize that they are no longer kind of your grandfather's car. This is a much more youthful car. It's a much more modern car. And really the big competition that's coming out later this year is the Genesis GV80 SUV. It's gonna essentially deliver all of the swagger that this car has with possibly better build quality, quality and a better warranty and it should be about $10,000 less. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2020 Lincoln Aviator. I definitely think that it's one of the top choices in the luxury SUV segment. So if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.